I'm Ella. You're probably wondering who I am and why I'm even talking to you. Well, it's because I'm a Shriners kid, but some people tell me that. I'm the mayor of Reno, and this is my story. Ella is my third daughter. She was one of the happiest babies ever. She was independent. She liked to sit on her own, play with her toys. She was progressing very normally. The weekend that this all happened, I uh, put her to bed and then she started crying. And it wasn't just crying, it was like intense. Something was wrong crying. And Ella goes completely limp. No feeling, can't sit up, nothing. We take her to the hospital. Nobody knows what it is x-ray, x-ray, start us on some antibiotics, see if that works. She continues to have zero movement in her body. It wasn't until the fourth day and this neurologist got out like a needle and started poking at her and she had zero response. And she said, we don't know how or why, but this child's paralyzed. It was one of the scariest days of my life and they came back with this diagnosis of transverse myelitis. Transverse myelitis is extremely rare. It's inflammation of the spinal cord that essentially causes a spinal cord injury without ever having had an accident. So it's a surprise to everybody um, and it's pretty traumatic because this kid that was otherwise normally functioning now is essentially fighting for her life. There was no repairing the damage that had been done. There was stopping it, which they did at that point, but we were day five or six by that point. And so her entire spinal cord had been damaged from the base of the brain all the way down. They told us that she was getting airlifted to UCSF because there was nothing that they could do here in Reno for us anymore. We spent a couple weeks there and it was probably the darkest moments of my entire life. I so badly wanted to hold her, but she was connected to a million machines and the, the nurses there kind of made it sound like it was a pain to have to finagle all that. Their exact words were, Ella will have no functional recovery and no quality of life. And they had told us that Ella had a spinal infraction and that she wasn't gonna grow anymore and you might as well just let her die. and I cried and I cried and I didn't sleep and it was horrible. We all talked and said this can't be Ella's destiny. I remember about the third or fourth day after that they said, well now we're sending you to this place called Shriners and the minute we walked in Shriners, like that was the day that Ella's life began again. And they got Ella out and they Put her on me and I was scared holding her I said don't you have to hook her up to a million machines and they were like no mom just just hold your baby and relax and then in walked Dr. Davidson who checked her and and said good things like it wasn't oh this is wrong this is bad he was like oh she's breathing really well for someone who's considered a quadriplegic it was the first moment I felt even a tiny bit of hope because my life before that was that Ella had no life ahead of her. And he knew all about transverse myelitis. And, and that was amazing. He was like, Jen, we've done this. We've been down this road. We know about it. You know, I'll tell you hard things that you're gonna have in life, but we're also gonna teach you how to raise this little girl and give her an amazing life. And it didn't dawn on me till about three, four days that that's why I was there. They were there to help me figure out how to raise a daughter with transverse myelitis who was considered a quadriplegic and to give her quality of life. And this was the first time I was like, oh, we, we might actually be able to continue on as a family and have a life. And then she moved after not moving for weeks. That day when she flipped her arm over, will be a day that I will remember the rest of my life.
One morning, I, I woke up and rolled over, and she was smiling at me. And I was like, you know what? If this little girl who's been lying in a hospital bed, if she can wake up with a big smile on her face, so can I. And that was like my goal every day after that. Shriners helped me believe at a time when I wasn't willing to believe anything but the worst that Ella had a future. I really thought that Ella's life was over and I had no idea that we were in for this whole big wonderful life that she has right now. Right back. Water up! I'm okay. My life is awesome because I have the right people inside my life. My dad is a goofball dad. I love him so much, he's the best. I like talking with my dad because he just helps me out through a lot. I love my mom. It's a little bit weird having her as a teacher, but I love it. I love my sisters because we just have a good bond, all three of us. Today when I see Ella with her friends, I feel so much joy that she's able to do the things that she's doing. Ella does view the world as nothing's wrong with her. Kids make fun of her, and she blows it off. When kids are out running, she's in her wheelchair, she's running. She is a cheerleader on the junior high cheerleading squad. Ella doesn't look at herself as any different than the girl that's doing flips. She is fun and sassy, and the kids love to help her because she is nice, and she is kind, and she's appreciative, and she's fun to be around. When I first walked into the room, it was clear that I was speaking with Ella and nobody else. You know, she's memorable. She's a force. The family had season tickets to University of Nevada, Reno. University of Nevada, Reno at that time didn't have really good ADA places for the kids to, to be able to move around in a wheelchair or on crutches. Ella and her mom and dad being who they are, um, they took on the University of Nevada, Reno in the newspaper and on the television. And Ella was the one that truly hard charged. So she got the nickname, the mayor of Reno. We'll go places and I'll have people go, oh, hi, Ella, and we'll walk by and I'll say, who was that? And she's like, I don't know. Okay, so everybody knows Ella. I always preach to my own children, there's nothing you can't do. And I think what the Shriners organization has given Tony the ability to be able to tell that to Ella and say, there's nothing you can't do and there's nothing you can't experience. When I look to the future for Ella, I know that whatever Ella puts her mind to, she'll get done. When you have a kid that has anything going on, being able to feel enveloped in love and know that people are looking out for you, that they care, that they're financially gonna take care of you. It's, it just makes it so that other part, you don't have to worry about that, and that really matters. It's good, it's a good organization. I love Shriners because they made my life awesome. I'm excited about the changes that are coming, and life is really good right now.